had a deep experience uh, with women in villages to such an extent that it changed me dramatically. It made me realize that all this education and affluence in which I was uh, born into uh, didn't teach me basic things about development, about how to manage production, how to work, how to uh, be self-reliant. And it was really women that gave me that understanding, how to be resilient. It, it's these kind of women that not only uh, bring together groups at the bottom and create pressure uh, for their empowerment and land rights and so on, but they also uh, uh, act nonviolently to create a way forward for these communities to get their land rights. And how, if they didn't have the nonviolent strategies in their hand, they could be easily um, uh, put down by government authorities. The nonviolent movement building brought groups together that became very strong in their commitment uh, for maintaining land rights and for um, having a nonviolent development. So a nonviolent training uh, is tailored to the people you're working with. There's no one prescriptive training. There are some principles that you use or some directions that are common. But clearly, if you're training grassroots women on land rights, or you're cha uh, training Colombian youth from, from um, Colombia, these are going to be very different trainings. They're going to start from where the people are at. You cannot impose a bottom, you cannot talk about a bottom-up development without starting from the participants position in their development, uh, in their societies. So obviously uh, there is a need to constantly adapt. But what is common for those people who have not taken the training is to first of all realize that nonviolence exists. Many people don't think it exists. Many people see violence existing and nonviolence as a way to stop violence from being too harsh. But they don't see nonviolence as having a existence and a being preempting conflict is a very vital part of dealing with conflict. You see a conflict arising, you try to derail it before it arises. You don't get drawn into it. You have to hold your non-reactive self and try to preempt violence. If violence is there, you have strategies for dealing with minimizing violence, for finding humor, for finding allies. So nonviolence is slow. It's not fast. It doesn't offer a, an easy solution. It's, it's, it's sometimes very slow and it requires deep patience. And so part of nonviolent training is being very patient, is being very calm, is not having expectations that are too high. Nonviolent conflict resolution, Rajni, should be taught in schools, like reading, writing, arithmetic. Yeah. It should be taught so that children themselves can find nonviolent solutions. It doesn't have to go to the principal. It doesn't have to be the parents who decide. The, the children who are in a con conflicting relationship need to learn how to solve those problems. With many of the youth, um, it's been uh, an incredible, incredibly inspiring to watch any kind of transformation. You know, watching them transform makes you feel, you know, that you've transformed also with them. Uh, I have seen hundreds of people, uh, not only in my own training work, but in other, uh, like Raj Gopal's and other Ekta Parishad colleagues and other nonviolent trainers, I've seen really a lot of people transform. 
transform so that they they are able to deal with not only their inner violence, but they're able to embrace external violence and bring a, a nonviolent response forward. And this, this is, uh, when you see it, a uh, number of times you really believe that it's very possible and that, you know, you re-communicate it and you inspire others. Thank you.